All right, good morning traders and welcome to the uh, Bookmap Advanced Education. This is the, the live trading webinar. Uh, we do a live analysis here Monday, Tuesday, Friday, 10 a.m. And then we have live trading with J Trader, uh, Stocks Trader on Wednesday and Scott Polsini, a Futures Trader on Thursday. Let's get into the risk disclosures and we'll jump right in. Uh, general disclosure, all Bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only. And and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so let's jump in here and take a look and see what's going on uh, in Bookmap. Uh, and um, uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, you should be able to see my screen uh, now and uh, uh, you can ask questions in the hashtag advanced webinar uh, uh, channel there uh, and uh, make sure that uh, everything is okay and up and running here or if you have any questions about anything in here. All right, so uh, a lot of different things uh, to kind of cover. Um, a, we can take a look at the higher time frame. To, good morning, Alan. Uh, good morning, uh, Alec. Um, you want to look at the stops and icebergs? Sure, sure. We can go with that over that. Um, let's go over the just kind of a higher time frame and, and kind of what's happening in the uh, uh, current market, and then we'll we'll look at some of the stops and icebergs. All right, if you don't mind. Uh, but uh, thanks for asking, uh, Alec. Uh, definitely, we can we can go over that. Uh, I want to show you guys a few different things in here uh, uh, to begin with. Um, on our YouTube channel, we went through uh, you know yesterday's. Uh, let me just show that here our yesterday's on Fridays. Okay. I want to show you where the recordings are. If you have any questions or, you know, you want to review it here, uh, go to live streaming on our YouTube channel here. And here's the recording here. Uh, you'll always see it on the uh, left-hand side when it updates. Uh, today's will be up here as well. Uh, there's another one though I want to show you. Uh, and that is from uh, Carmine, a futures trader. Uh, and let me show you that in here. I, he posted a great video. I think you guys will get quite a bit out of it uh, if you take a look in here. Okay, where is it? Yeah, right here. Okay, so watch this video in here. Um, uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's excellent. Uh, he, he, he talks about absorption. Uh, and being able to see it, uh, and he's not even looking at the uh, absorption indicator nor the iceberg uh, indicator here. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna cover that with him uh, pretty soon, so that he can uh, start to add these into his uh, tools and, and arsenal. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, he goes over, uh, and you'll see from the video here, really important level uh, because of the order flow. That's what I want to cover in here. He's looking at this 4505 in the S&P. Uh, uh, this level here. Uh, and we're going to look at that again here as well. Look where we have come back up into this 4505 just now, and we can't trade through it, right, at the moment. This is, if you want to talk about uh, support becoming resistance, this is how it happens. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was looking at uh, from February 3rd, the, the price action. Uh, so, you know, four days ago, he's looking at the price action, uh, and he's looking at a, a, a major player uh, absorbing as much as they can get on uh, at uh, 4505. So now you can see there's this is uh, you know a lot of liquidity is up here around 4510. Uh, we're just kind of bouncing off this 4505 area right now, uh, and and we've gotten a little bit above it, but we've re retraced back into it. Now it looks like we got some buyers interested here. It looks like they're going to go for it. This 4510 looking for them to trade up into 4510, maybe up into 4515. We got some 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 nice momentum here uh, on the buy side. Nice buy clusters up here as well. Let's see if the buyers can do it. They, we got to see buyers up here at 07 and a half. They we just we just got a retest up here. This is not the kind of buying we're looking for. Okay, we're looking for a lot more than that uh, for this to break out. We look for the aggressors here. Okay, to be able to to pull this market higher uh, and trade into this liquidity. Now, uh, hopefully. You know, from our, our webinar on Friday, we're looking for maybe um, some more uh, demand here in the order book. We're starting to see it at 4,500. Okay, see them coming in here is kind of blue-ish area. Uh, and we're looking for them to kind of, you know, show more demand in here. And then the reaction to that demand is we want to see buyers. 
So it looks like they're going to do it here. Let's see if we get buyers now. We got a little bit of demand in here, looking for buyers to trade up into this liquidity here. All right. So just by this demand in here, what we're kind of seeing in here is it's it's very light, uh, but you can see it. See how the reaction to it was buyers. Okay, now it's not enough buyers at the moment. Okay, we, we can look at that. We're looking for big green dots to pull this market higher. Now see see how this 4505 came in right now, and see how they're showing more supply at a lower level, and we found sellers. So we're kind of in a back and forth environment at the moment. Right, we're kind of looking. We're looking to see now. See, see, they're pulling in these areas here. So this is going to be kind of an important area uh, to see if we can break out from or not. Uh, and we look at what the order book, uh, what the order book does, and what's the behavior of the participants, the aggressors. Okay. So uh, anyway, let's uh, take a step back here and look at our higher time frame uh, that we had marked up here. Uh, and uh, we're going to look at the daily, the hourly, and the 15-minute chart here. Uh, and then start to look for levels in here uh, from a higher time frame. And then we're going to take a look at book map to get some insight in the order flow uh, at some of these levels. Okay, now these, these were uh, three levels that we had um, kind of marked up last week. Uh, we were looking for, uh, this was on Monday, last Monday, we're looking for the move back up into some of these areas in here. Uh, and uh, we got it. In fact, they came up even higher uh, but they came up to look at this cluster up here, okay? And we didn't get really above it. We, that's where we found the sellers. We finally found the sellers. We were looking for them around here, around this kind of uh, 62 area. Uh, went up a little bit higher, and then, boy, did we find them, right? Uh, and they took it right back down. Now, look where they took it back down. Look at this uh, uh, structure here in the market. This is just understanding market structure is so essential, then we look at the levels in here and the order flow around those levels, right? So this is the top of the structure from all of this activity uh, uh, a week ago, uh, and um, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And you can see that we bounced off of it so far, and we're back up into the range up here, all right? And then here's here's uh, today, Monday, uh, and, and the hourly chart, and we're just kind of right in the middle of the range in here. So we're not really seeing much at the moment. Uh, and uh, if we take a look at the 15-minute chart, uh, you can see the um, uh, the move down, uh, the move back up. Look where it retested back up here, okay, this uh, 40, 45.33, sold back down. Look where it, it retested down here and closed uh, on uh, on the third, okay? So you can see the move back down into uh, this area here where it broke out from, and we're just kind of going back and forth in here right now. So we don't really see too much of a direction at the moment on these time frames even on the daily we're kind of right in the smack dab in the middle here okay so we're looking for direction we're looking to see if if more aggressive buyers come in if we get a skew in the order book to maybe move price up into these previous levels All right that's the first scenario we're going to look at and then we're going to look at the opposite of that see the wicks down here on the 15 minute chart and see how they kind of retested the close down here but not all the way back down if we start to see uh, sellers come in up at these areas, then we'd be looking for first off a move back into the middle and then lower end of the range here uh, and uh, this swing here around 82. And then maybe we can even break that and trade back down lower. OK, so anyway, uh, we want to look at some of these higher time frame scenarios. Uh, and then we're going to look at the order flow. All right. So uh, and that 4505, just watch. You'll see what I mean when you watch that uh, that video from uh, from Carmine. I think you you guys will uh, like it and get quite a bit out of it. OK, so anyway, that's that. And let's continue on here. Uh, and let me see if you guys have any questions in here. OK, now, you know, we sh we showed on uh, Friday uh, in in the uh, in this webinar here, the um, uh, you know, going through order book and balances and starting to understand that. Now, you know, uh, boy, you can have quite, there you, there you go. Thank you, Alec, uh, for that uh, uh, badass supply and demand course. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. No, he did a really, really good job. Uh, it's really great. All right, so uh, take a look at that, uh, uh, that video as well. Um, so, uh, all right, so uh, let's, let's zoom in here and, and get, a, get a feel for what's going on. Um, all right, so, uh, point of control here is this yellow line, okay, uh, and you can see that uh, sellers are below it now, and decisively, 
okay right back down below now you know on friday we went through this exercise because it's a very tricky market uh it's been um you know one side of the range try to get people to to commit go to the other side of the range get people to try to commit over there come back in the middle i mean it's just it was really kind of kind of treacherous uh uh kind of midweek to end of week uh, uh last week so uh but we can get some insight from that right we're going to look read the order flow in here and we look for these imbalances in here and we look for the reaction of the buyers and sellers and, and to see when they might, uh, someone might be upside down, uh, looking at stops and icebergs in here as well. So here's our move lower, okay, looking for this 40, 4490 to transact right now, uh, and uh, looking for these sellers to hit into that. Let's see if we get a little bit of a push here, looking for the order book here to give us some help. Nothing yet. Okay, and uh, yeah, the. Um, Getting a pullback here, okay, to where this structure uh, kind of broke here, okay. And now we're, we got the little pullback here. It didn't come quite all the way up, okay. And we already see the sellers already down at 49, 44.91. Okay, a little bit of supply. All right, sellers should be able to hit it into 44.90. And then let's see, I want to see them trade through it. And get back down to maybe uh, lows of the day here, 44.85. Okay, 44.80. Right, starting to move the market here, uh, back down to the bottom of the range. Let's see if the sellers can continue to press this. Okay, so that's that will be scenario one actually right now. Here's more supply up here. What's the reaction to this supply? We should we should find some sellers here. No, we found a bit of buying. Okay, sellers, here we go. There we go, 90. Okay, now some icebergs starting to transact down here. Okay, NQ is also going down. Thank you, Alan. Yeah, okay, here's our new imbalance here in the order book. Looking for sellers to hit down into this 88 level. This is gonna be kind of critical level here, this 90. To break. Okay, seems that sellers are interested, so let's see them take this 90 on. More supply up here. And sellers should, let's see them hit it here. And hit into the 88, 87, 88 level here. There's still sellers in here. Okay, still holding this bottom structure as well. 92 to 93 in here. Still holding it. Okay, we're in between these two areas of supply and demand right here. And we're looking for some insight here. We're still holding the structure. Okay, now they're trying to break it. Okay, but we're, we're just retesting back up to here. Okay, outside of the structure. If we come right back in. All right, let's see if we can get let's see if we can get a little bit of more imbalance in here on the supply side. And let's see, let's see they maybe pull here at 90. Now they're doing the opposite. They're pulling here on on the on the supply side. Okay. 
I'm not buying it here. This is just it looks like false advertising to me. We're still in a downtrend. Sellers are, are moving it here is what it looks like to me. We've just retested this structure here around 95-ish. That's it. Here's our sellers. All right, sellers, there's our, there's our uh, skew. All right, we should be able to find the sellers. They should be able to hit 90 and trade through it into our, our 88 level here. Okay, looking for that scenario here. Okay. We want to watch and understand the, the behavior of these sellers and, uh, and the supply and demand in here. Buyers keep on buying here, but uh, we're down lower here. So all the sellers have to do, if you get a little bit of skew in the book here, you should be able to hit it right into this area here. And there we go. There's our skew in the order book. Let's see the reaction. We should get our sellers. There we go, 90 more more skew look at the lower skew here okay lower supply or supply being lowered to uh, lower price level look at how fickle this guy is though okay, he's he's playing games back and forth in here there's our 90 though 90 is transacted okay looking for more sellers here still okay we have quite a we've got some icebergs in here though No, still, I'm still looking for sellers in here. We got a nice edge down here, a weak bottom. Liquidity at 44.80. Yep. 540 contracts down there. Thanks, Doug. Still bouncing around in here. All right, well, anyway, uh, we're still bouncing around in this level here it's not being so so uh straightforward with us here okay more sellers but i want to see the supply come down lower here and push it through i want to see them pull on at, at, at 90 and then maybe uh 88 maybe we get down to, to doug's level down here at 80 here we go. Let's see if we get our sellers here. There they go. There we get our sellers here. Okay, now we got to get the follow through here. A lot of buy icebergs. Careful here. Careful here. This is where the sell volume is down here, right? What if we get buy volume on the other side? That's the, this is the secondary scenario here. Buy volume on the other side, they'll, they'll go right back to the point of control here at 4,500. Okay, and we can still be in a downtrend here. This is where the sellers came in and took control. Uh, chicken and egg. Uh, good question. Um, yeah, it looks like it looks like we got our mean reversion guys coming in. Just play it right back to to 4,500 here.
anyway guys we covered this uh, the other day as well like we have our sellers down here okay but the scenario is what if we get our buyers up here okay and then these sellers are on the hook here right and then we look for these guys to tra trade it right back to value previous value areas now even if we come back here this is where the sellers took control all right this is essential to understand like here this is our our, our area here okay, that we're looking at okay and so far sellers are below that area so we can get we can still get a move back to 4500 uh, and then a continuation of the trend Uh, let's see, 92 is a spot gamma level. Okay. All right. So, uh, Doug, thank you. So you got you got spot gamma level as well as we got uh, icebergs buying in here. Okay. And uh, let's. Uh, Alec wanted to go over icebergs, so we'll we'll go over that. So here here they're coming back to 4,500 here. Okay. They can go a little bit higher still, kind of this O2 area here. Okay, and and sellers can still be in control up here. Okay, let's see if we get the if the sellers come in here okay, and take it down below it. Start to look at some uh, some lines just to put some structure on here. Uh, you want to know if we have a minimum setting like uh, C stops above 20 orders. Yeah, sure. Absolutely, uh, Alec. Uh, no no problem. Yeah, let me show you that. Okay, so let's see if these sellers can do this now. Uh, we got some exhaustion up here. Like, the, you know, we, we have the, the, the possibility for these sellers to come right back in now. No, O2. And order book's not helping us out too much. I mean, we have we have the supply up here at 04, 05. Okay, but it's pretty dark in this little area here. So buyers can rip it right up into this area pretty quickly. Okay, and we do have like, it's just kind of blue blue down here. So there is some, some uh, demand down here, but we're looking for them to start to pull. And we want to see more supply come in here. And we we've got to see the, pull, the the sellers come in and, and move it away here, right? Initiated selling. Initiate the move back down to uh, our ninety level. No, we're st you, you can see the reaction to that liquidity in here. So we're going to go back up to 04 and 05 here. Um, Let's zoom out. Let's get our bigger picture. All right, so let, let me show, oh, we're kind of waiting for this. Let's, let's show those stops and icebergs here. Uh, the on chart, uh, that's what I wanna, I'm gonna show here, uh, Alec. The um, show icebergs, all right, let's go through it. Uh, now, you can use this automatic threshold here. Um, and um, uh, if you have that box checked here, you see how I can't put in the threshold any longer? It says 49, but it's kind of grayed out. Okay, so what that is doing is calculating here 49 of, um, or, you know, it's within a 60-minute period and the standard standard deviation multiplier of 1.1, right? Now, you can play around with this. If I bring it up to 2.5, you can see now it's 96. It's only going to show me or filter 
for me 96. Now, you don't want that. You can just uh, deselect it. You can put in 20 here. Okay, So you're looking for icebergs of 20 or more. That's it. Okay, we zoom in here, you'll see that. Here, here's one that's live in the market still, and 66 have transacted so far. Okay, and there's a trade through it. Now, that, that, that got filled here, and it was for 88 total. So that one for 66 right here, totally filled, it executed. E means execution, okay, and uh, for 82. Uh, Alec, does this answer your question? That, that filtering there? All right, let's just zoom out here. Yeah, I mean, uh, the programmers did such a nice job on this indicator. Uh, the um, uh, you can see all of this unwind here. Uh, this whole iceberg uh, order. Um, okay, oh, that answered your question. Excellent. All right. Well, let me just go through it here in a little more detail for you guys. So um, if we zoom in here, see that the T means transaction here. Okay, or trade. Uh, and um, if we zoom in here and we continue to zoom in here, you'll see more and more, like it's aggregating them because there's so many. Uh, so we have 29 traded here, five traded on this one here. That was an iceberg, three traded here. That was still the same iceberg, the same iceberg. You can you can reference it down here in the subchart. And I have the setting here on the subchart. Let me show you, okay? I have my setting here for sum, all right? So what that's gonna do is it's going to show you, um, uh, you know, buy minus sell here. So this is where that iceberg in these 29 initially uh, kicked off, right? So now it's it's not actually quite true because it still has trade here. I want to zoom in and I want to show you what happens here. See the D here? That's when it was detected, all right? So, and it's, it's actually going to be this transaction over here uh, when it was detected. Okay, so we're down at a microsecond level here. So it's not like, you know, many minutes pass by. Like, you know, it's just we're talking millions of seconds here. Okay, maybe it was, uh, you know, two, uh, uh, well, a milliseconds, maybe around, uh, I don't know, 200 or so, or God, we can we can get that answer. Um, here, here's 300 micro. Here's, yeah, so 300 uh, microseconds, all right? So three millis milliseconds, or if I get my math all screwed up. Anyway, 300 microseconds, that's for sure. I want to show you this, though, be because we know this is, it detected it here, all right? Uh, and then it placed the transact, or it, it placed the detection here, okay? And you can see how that lines up with our iceberg detector. What I want to show is this, okay? Is not, we, we don't know that this is an iceberg yet until the second transaction takes place. You'll see this. Once the second transaction takes place, then this will populate over here. And it will show what it was. Because now we have the ID order. We know what happened in here. Uh, and that now uh, we, can, we can show when it was detected. And we can show each individual uh, transaction afterwards. Okay, so you can see this kicking off here. Uh, this iceberg and it's is transacting uh, and they're they're on the offer here the green dots here are the aggressors they're the ones trading into the iceberg so this iceberg is short up here okay so transaction for two in parentheses transaction for one transaction for one here's another one for two okay and it's just sitting there still in the order book that blue line it's still in the order book getting filled okay all the way through here. Now you'll see even if they move it up or if they cancel it or whatever. So as we continue to watch this iceberg and let's just zoom out. So now we see how we aggregated it. There's so many transactions that happen very, very quickly. I mean, now we're only looking at five seconds between each vertical dotted line. We know that 66 transacted up there and it's still in the order book. We saw that in real time. Uh, and then we saw it starting to transact. And then what happened? 82. 
right? It started to transact into it right here, and it was to it was fully executed. That's what the E stands for, executed, right? And it doesn't have a parenthesis anymore. We know this is the full amount here, 82. That was the size of that iceberg. You might see a, a C here and then the, the number, okay? If you see cancellation and let's say it was eight, let's say it was cancellation in 82. What we know at that point is that the order was canceled and 82, only 82 of the um, uh, iceberg were filled, 82 contracts, that's it. We don't know what the size was. We don't know if it's 100, we don't know if it's 1,000, but we do know the transactions. So what you're looking at here is the transactions of the icebergs, all right? So I haven't gone over that in a, in a while. I wanted to cover that uh, for you guys, uh, and uh, we haven't really missed anything here. Uh, we've been just kind of bouncing off this 05 level, uh, and uh, right back to point of control again here, okay? Uh, most most traded level you can see how that acts like a magnet here now we're, we're looking to try to get some insight here of uh, who might be uh, this is a little too much for me on the icebergs okay so uh, here come our buyers all right so here come our buyers they're going to trade it up to 10 uh, and um, and try to go to highs of the day here okay looks pretty good we have a stop run here now again you know it's been a pretty treacherous environment here uh, last um, uh, several days. So let's look for the scenario. We have a big stop run here. This we've seen so many times now. Uh, big stop run up through an area. Sellers come back in and trade it back into the range. Okay. Now, what we want to look for is after a stop run occurs. Now, we know it's a big stop run. Okay. We can see it. Uh, and uh, we have the reference to it as well. Okay. So it's... Uh, Let's see, it was 160 here, and this was negative 4. So this is negative 500. So it's like 600 here uh, uh, stops being triggered. Okay. Now, just because a stop is triggered doesn't mean uh, that that price is going to reverse. Okay. There might be, it might accept above this level. Okay. What we want to understand is after the stops occur, this is the event. The stop run has occurred. Now, we know that. That is fact. Right now we look to see if are we going to accept above this area here or are we going to reject and come back down into the range here. All right, so that's what we're looking for in here. Here's here's an iceberg that was canceled. Here's another one uh, canceled. And we have this one here for 645 still in the order book here. Okay, actually um, only two were tra only two transacted though. So this this guy um, Let's just take, we can take a look at that one, but uh, yeah. Anyway, sometimes you see a slash under, you know, like here, canceled, and then three. Well, there was three separate icebergs in there, okay, at that, at that price level. Anyway, guys, it's on the knowledge base. You can take a look. Oh, excellent. Okay, so... Uh, uh, that uh, that helps you there, uh, Kobe, on the uh, on the icebergs. Yeah, yeah. There there's a lot more. There's I mean, it, really, it's quite detailed. It's amazing to see the detail in here. Even this, like, if we look at the execution here, um, I mean, look at how convoluted this is. In fact, uh, there's a lot going on in here. We got multiple icebergs in some of these levels in here. Right. So anyway, um, stops. Uh, we can also show the stops on the on the screen here. Uh, we have them in the sub chart as well. They should match up uh, perfectly. So um, let's see here. How do you add the transaction symbol to the icebergs? Oh, okay. Let me show you that. All right, so uh, yeah, maybe maybe we'll just go over stops and icebergs. This uh, you know kind of focus uh, the main focus here uh, in uh, in this webinar since we're off to a pretty good start. Um, okay, so let's go to stops and icebergs on chart. Okay, and then uh, we're going to go to the settings in here. All right, so we have it for twenty as the minimum threshold. Uh, you can use this automated uh, um, or automatic individual threshold here if you like. 
uh, you know, it'll, it'll filter out a lot. Now, when you start to filter out a lot, you're going to note there's going to be some distinctions or discrepancies between on chart and sub chart because some were filtered out, right? I can see it already, I think. No. Oh, yeah, maybe in here. There's a little blip in here. Uh, let's just zoom in there. Boy, it's not much. But there's a little blip in here, right? A couple. Okay, they're not on, on the chart here. Okay, the software is working just fine. Uh, it's just that uh, we, we haven't, um, uh, we filtered out for it. Okay, so you can even see it's like like 10 or something in here. So it didn't make the threshold of 20, okay, at that point. Or it didn't make the threshold, I think we just changed it. No, it's still at 20, right? So we see two for, for about 10 each, it looks like, something like that, All right? Now, the, the auto, automatic uh, threshold here, I like this feature very much. Uh, it is based on time, okay? And then it's kind of an, let's just make it simple here because we, we put in standard deviation, but we're gonna make it really simple here to begin with. Um, just think of the um, time interval and an average, all right? So, uh, and you have a multiplier here. So you can make that average multiplier like two and a half or one or, you know, slide it here. Uh, and then you look, you know, that you'll see the, the grayed out number here in the threshold it'll bump bump up or if you bring it down it goes down All right so you can control that in here very nicely now the way that this is very intelligently done i think the way that they they did this um is that uh it's based on standard deviation instead of um the av moving average All right so uh you know the, the the deviation of it's basically the deviation of the average All right so if you have it down at zero you're just looking at the average Okay, now you can bump that up with the standard deviation multiplier. That's how it works. Okay, this is a really, really nice feature here. So you don't always have to be zooming in and out, right? You can look, you can look at a, a, um, a one that kind of fits the way that you trade uh, on your time frame. Okay, so uh, anyway, you need to, need to cover some of those details in here because you will see discrepancies between on chart and sub chart it's because we're filtering, all right? Uh, the the, uh, the data here is, is very exact. Okay, uh, let's see. Any other questions? How do you add the transaction symbol? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't even get to the, your, your question. All right, let me show you that. Um, it's down here. All right, you'll, you'll see the icons in here. Here's here's the, you know, transact or execute or whatever. Um, here's where you can um, uh, display them, right? So you'll, you'll see it um, uh, show the event type. See, if you deselect that, you won't, you won't be seeing the, 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 the letter here any longer. All right. Aggregate or cancel that that one as well. You can uh, you can deselect in here. Show aggregate E and C. Well, that's actually that's actually something different. Um, show detection icons if you don't want to see that. Uh, show execution icons. See how we, we can uh, uh, see how we just deselected it and now you're only going to see the the uh, transactions uh, or cancellations now. So here, here, here we go. We, we see transactions, and this one's still in the order book here. Okay, we know that as fact, right? It's still active. And here, the other one is cancellation here. So if you want to look at that, uh, or if you want to look at uh, executions, okay, show cancellation or you know deselect cancellations. You can also do that. There's a lot of different settings in here. Uh, the, probably instead of going over this in detail. Uh, Let's uh, let me show you on the knowledge base where it is, guys. Here we go. So here's our rejection back to the back to the mean here, um, or back to the most traded level, and we still have sellers in here. Okay. So this was uh, actually the the, the scenario we we're kind of looking for. Uh, it took a while here uh, to unfold. Usually you see quick rejection and then a quick move back. Okay. Here it accepted. And then it's pulling down here. So now looking for these guys to trade it back down to this iceberg and this liquidity here at 4490. Okay, back down to our 4490 level here. 
Okay, again, pretty pretty wicked stuff in here. Nice trap above this area here. Uh, and uh, let's looking for stop runs. We already have one here. Back to point of control. Back to point of control. Okay. Looking to see if they can press it further. We have high liquidity in here at 4,400 or 4,500. Okay, and I want to see them stay. And I want to see some more sellers come back in around here, 97. And we're not going to get that clarity. Okay, they're back to 4,500. Not only is it the figure, it's the, the point of control. Okay, nice stop run here. Again, stop run. So we can we can move, buyers can try to move it right back outside again too, back up to here. Okay, let's see if they go for that in that scenario here. Or, or are we going to get our sellers again? Okay, let's look at the order book and we'll look at the volume here. Okay, we got some supply up here. Iceberg coming in. Uh, let me show you in the knowledge base here, guys. Go to help and go to the user guide. Okay, that'll take you to the knowledge base. Uh, and then here, uh, you're in the user guide section right now. We need to go to the add-on section because the, the stops and icebergs is an add-on. It's not the core book map uh, that you're looking at. So go to add-ons, uh, and then in here you'll see stops uh, and icebergs uh, subchart, and then right below it is on chart. All right, so Alec, uh, read through this in here. Uh, it goes through it in detail. Okay, here, de detection, trade, execution, cancellation, what we just covered. All right, that, that'll be uh, really helpful. I'll put this into the uh, into the chat for you. There you go. Um, it's counting. Okay, this stops and icebergs. It it it's counting the um, transactions. Okay. The transaction has to occur. We don't know if it's a stop or an iceberg beforehand. Boy, I have not gotten a really clean read on anything today. Um, I mean, once they started to move it, you know, we we're looking for some of these these areas to trade, but those, you know, it wasn't. We're just looking for it to kind of momentum to carry it on up into those areas. We're looking for like a bigger move here to unfold, uh, and uh, trying to read the order book in here for uh, uh, where this might go. I mean, we did we did cover this in here. Uh, that you know, you know, this was this was something that we covered in the webinar last week. They're selling into, selling into, selling into. I'm still looking for sellers. Okay, but the the other scenario is once we, you know, this is kind of all of the major sellings down here. This is where they moved it here, and we want to see a lot of selling in this area here. That's the, the initial move away from value here. Okay, that moves it and they take control of that market but we get big selling down here and they can't move it lower that's when we get buyers can come back in and you get our mean reversion traders and they come roaring back in uh you know typically uh uh and, and trade it right back up to these uh back up to the the point of control or, or where it dropped from here okay. uh, and then uh, if they can do that they can even try to Try to get it to the other side of the range, which is what they did. They, you can see that they traded up above here where it dropped from, and we see more buyers up here. Now, even up here, it's still pretty tricky. I mean, we're above it, and we're above it on buying. We get a pull back to 4,500. We see some selling in here, but it's in, and not until in here do we get more clarity that the buyers are going to try to move it up to, to 10. All right. So not not a you know not a whole. A, whole lot or, or a real clean read in that um, uh, for that move back up into this this area here sellers could have taken it here right we're looking for that exhaustion in here and sellers to hit it and try to try to take it right back down 
uh, into these these lower lows here. Okay, and real 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 uh, kind of um, just unclear right now. Not getting much from it. Uh, what is the white line SVP? Yeah, this is the VWAP here. So let me show you that. Just right click in here, go to configure, and uh, the um, show the VWAP line. Okay, is that is that right there? All right. Now that's different than showing the VWAP on chart, which is really really nice uh, feature. So just go up here. You you can you can click on it up here if it's not selected, and select it here. Um, or you can go also to the studies and configuration here and then select it here as well okay and then change the color you can have it I have it reset here at the session time okay at 9 30 uh, and it should reset so my mine might be different than yours because I, I reset it I've had data already since 9 30 and I have it reset at 9 30 to zero Okay, so pointy control and, and, and VWAP are right in the middle here. So these are this is our our kind of average level, and we've been we've been kind of bashing around on each side of that average level and trading right back into the middle of it. So we're looking for like sellers to try to pull it away or buyers to try to pull it away. And you look at our distribution here, right? It's a single distribution. Here's a little bit of a bump out here. But uh, we, we've got, you know, we're right in the middle here. Anyway, guys, like, uh, you know, typically, like, typically we look for the, the trending move. Uh, and it, that's a lot easier. Uh, you know, like last week and, and today as well, uh, you can see that it's not as easy. Uh, the trending move, we're looking for it to unfold here because we had been bouncing around back in here and we, oh, okay, sellers come in. They're starting to move it. We're looking for it to continue. Here we had the, that that volume down here. I was still looking for them to, to move it. Okay, but then we went through that other scenario, and, and that's the one that unfolded. Like, like we know that there's a lot of selling down here, and they can't seem to get through it. Uh, and um, uh, it's not a whole lot of buying uh, that, that comes in and moves it back up. All right, but uh, anyway, we'll see the distinction. We know when they're really moving it away from an area and where they're really moving it uh, uh, you know, uh, away from the area on the buy side here. This is actually looks really good. Again, this is really good advertising for, for buying uh, to take this higher. Okay, this was after the stop run too, after the stop run, right? So uh, we still see some more stops triggered in here, but uh, this is these are buyer new buyers are from around this point onward. There's this back and forth in here. This is new buying in here. And this is them getting stopped out here. Okay, below the swings in here. So this is pretty wicked stuff, but uh, you know this is how the market works. I mean, you have to figure like once buyers, once you become a buyer, now your position is a seller. And where are you going to feel the pain? And where are you going to cover? Okay, some selling icebergs coming in here. This guy's still down here at six six hundred and forty-five that transacted. Let me go back to I like I like seeing the um, icons on here. Oh, they are they are on. Okay. Uh, let's see on the bottom. Those are volume bars. Yes, these are volume bars down here. Yeah. 
yeah let me I'll just right click on them and you can go right to volume bar settings okay and i have them match my dot settings for for the clustering you know inherit inherit from the dots right just click on that uh, and then i have my setting here i have the bar width of 15 which is the max i have it on solid and i have it on volume delta okay so it should look pretty similar to what i'm seeing in the dots okay sometimes it, you know it looks sometimes you get more clarity by by looking at that okay look, look again here buyers see how they're trying to move it away here okay uh, and uh, i don't see a lot of stops here yet So are we going to get continuation or are we going to get uh, a continuation of this up move here? Okay. Well, then we're looking for them to bounce off of this area here. This is our pullback. Okay. It is a low volume pullback. Okay. Now here's the, this is the point here, kind of do or die. Our buyer's going to support it here. Okay. Maybe, maybe you can go a little bit lower, but yeah, it looks like they're going to try to support it looks like it okay this is tricky okay we're looking for either then we're going to support it or we're going to get down below here below where they initiated this move outside of away from the most traded level okay if they cannot do it look for sellers on the other side here okay and they'll trade it back down to the lower uh, uh levels here probably probably down to this kind of 96 or 95 liquidity here in fact, we have a, a nice little kind of, um, the order book is uh, has a bit of a skew here. So let's see if we get our sellers in here. Let's see if we can upend these buyers looking for sellers. A okay, big, big selling here. Okay, let's see if we get a, a, a better skew in the order book. See how, see how the skew is right now? Okay, there's more supply up here and, and we're not really in the middle here. We're looking for sellers to take it back down now. Okay, the middle would be somewhere around 99, but they can take it back down to 96 and 95. So we're looking for that scenario here. And it's not, not unfolding yet. See, buyers are trying to support it here. Again, that's new buying, mostly new buying. There's some stops, but mostly new buying in here. All right, what if we get sellers below it here? Okay, these these buyers have to unwind, and they'll unwind down here, down down at the bottom here. Okay, so we're looking to see where these seller or these buyers get upended. It's going to be down here, right? Well, likely down here. Okay, below the swing. All right, so that's the scenario we're looking for here. Let's see these sellers come roaring in here now. I'm looking for them. Okay, so basically, you know, it's kind of a, a little bit of a, uh, a leap of faith on this one here. Uh, we didn't have much in the order book. I mean, we do have a bit of an imbalance here, but we don't have a whole lot to kind of support this, uh, this idea. It's just that we know that this is new buying. Okay, we're using our stops and uh, icebergs in here to, to tell us this. Okay, even in here, this is still, they're, they're still buying in here. Okay, they're going to get upended if we get down below here. Okay, so here, here, this is this would be, it's not a recommendation, but you know, where you, where do you get in on something like this? Well, you look for some some exhaustion. We got it here, you know. You just basically just have to kind of leap of faith here, uh, and and jump in and look for that move. Uh, otherwise, I I really don't. I mean, we can look for the order book skew, uh, maybe to give us a little more insight if they if they come down here, and uh, uh, really skew the book here. We're looking for that move. Right, buyers can shoot right back up here right now to O2 or O3 very quickly. So if we get the skew, maybe that that's a good a good uh, uh, you know way of, of looking at a a bit higher probability here. And it's going to be a quick move. That's the thing. Okay, we have a lot of icebergs that are absorbing on the uh, sell side there. Well, not a whole lot, but some. OK, 
Okay, a lot of buying. All right, so that scenario is not, not unfolding. Okay, still could though if we get down below here. Boy, this is a kind of a boring session, to be honest. Um, just look, look at the, you know, just, just right in the middle here. And this wasn't bad, and 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 kind of missed this one here, uh, for this move back to the center. That was good for about ten points. Anyway, I think in this environment here, identifying these buyers and sellers that are new in here, like here's our stop run, okay, all the way up to about here. And now this point, this point onward, this is new buying in here. Okay, so look for the sellers to put the squeeze on them. Okay, same in here. Now there's a stop run there. Okay, now this is more or less new buying in here. Okay, so are we going to get more buyers back up above this area and the move? Or are we going to get sellers down below here and try to move it and have these guys uh, forced to, uh, to become sellers? A lot of icebergs here on the sell side. Starting to, well, not a whole lot. And this is why I really like uh, looking at, um, yeah, I mean, actually, we're seeing quite a few. Quite a few. If we if we put it all together in here, this is why I like having both on my chart, and I like having summation here uh, with the icebergs. Uh, how do I know that that is new buying, old buying, whatever? Um, yeah, because because uh, it, uh, if it's a stop, likely it is. Well, okay, so. Um, yeah, I guess it's uh, somewhat of a, um, uh, you know, I'm assuming, right? So, I mean, it could be buy stops entering the market, but l most likely it is sell stops um, or, or, you know, uh, sellers that are, you know, they're, they're covering. Okay, and you, that's why we get the stop runs, these quick, you know, big, big moves here, like, uh, like this one down here. Okay, that's a stop run. Okay, so most likely they're getting stopped out of the market, right? So if if there if this is if there's a lot of stops in here, is that new selling coming in? No. Right? Is people exiting the the market? So they're kind of like crossing the finish line, uh, you know, as a as a loser uh, basically. Okay, so we're looking to where, where you know, so where is there new buying in here? So this is another, there's a stop run in here, but there's some new buying in here too. Okay, this is new buying in here, right? I don't see big stop runs in here. So now, how, how is this new buying doing? Okay, well, they're, first off, they're, going, they're running right into a lot of icebergs. Uh, secondly, so far at least, they have not been, they're making higher higher lows. They're making an equal high here. Right? They have not made a higher high yet. It looks like they're going to go for it. Looks like they want to trade back up to 05 here. Yeah, there they go. Okay, now see the stop run there? All right. So now we've got, let's just take a look at this. Let's understand this volume in here. So we have, you know, a lot of uh, new buying in here. Now they just got paid. Okay, they're in profit. Now it's a stop run though. Okay, so now let's look again at this scenario. What if we see selling down below this area here? Okay, I'm looking for a quick move to 4,500 and then maybe even, even lower. Yeah, these guys would be trapped. Yeah, or I'm sorry, these guys in here will feel the heat. They're in profit right now. Okay, so looking for that scenario, let's see if we get a skew in the order book. Okay, and then looking for sellers to come right back in here. And 
no skew, no skew yet. Okay, there's some exhaustion. Now let's see if they if the sellers pick it up here. Looking for them. There they are. Okay, they should be able to drop it here. Back down to 4,500 is what we're looking for. Okay, look at the cluster of buying. Okay, it's up here. You know, so like, like we're, we're identifying stops up here. Okay, and uh, uh, looking for those, uh, uh, if it's new buying or new selling in here. So there's kind of, they're kind of imbalanced here, right? So looking for our sellers yet again here now to hit the bid pretty hard back down to our our most traded level here and not showing up yet you know we have we have some nice iceberg activity in here too All right, sellers, hit it. There we go. They should be able to hit it harder than that. A lot harder. Forty-five hundred, and I want to see the other side of the range. I want to see them blaze through the um, uh, most traded level here. All right? I want to see them get maybe maybe back down into our. Uh, here they come. There they, there they are. All right, so we got down to about well, at the bottom of this range here, okay, 98. All right, still looking for them, though. I, I want to see them push it all the way back down to our 4490 level. There they go. There they go. 90, 95, let's see, 95, transact. And I want to see, we're probably going to get, we might get a pullback here. If we get a pullback, likely to about 98. This is where they kind of took control. Well, here, just, you know, uh, above, just above 4,500. And then also here. Okay. Look at the stop run here. Okay. This is the, this is, uh, is this is good. This is the scenario we're looking for. New buying in these areas up here. Here we had our stop run, which is not new buying. That's selling, likely getting, you know, exiting. But then we have we have these guys still on the hook in here, and here they're not. Now they're exiting. Right. So here we got our pullback here to 98. Right. It is a low volume pullback. Okay. There's more selling than there is buying in here, even though it was a pretty steep pullback here. Okay. So does that make sense? Do you, do you guys do you guys understand this uh, kind of under understanding of like who's on the hook in some of these areas in the order flow? Okay, and then how we see the um, uh, you know understanding the con not only the context here but like like the the level at where this buying and selling is taking place, right? And so instead of like being really frustrated in some of these days, we can kind of look at some of these areas in here and see where they might be upside down. And we look for this kind of activity. Now that we have a new stop run down here, I don't know if we're going to get down to our 90 level. right? We have to see new selling coming in here now. And I don't see it. See, see like uh, this is again, like we have mostly stops being triggered all the way down here. Where are the sellers in here? I don't see them. Right? We're looking for sellers to start to come back into this market. And so far, there's just... There's more buying than selling, so they're going to trade it right back to the mean here, and we're we're back to square one. Okay, so um, Fatal, does that make uh, make sense? Headbangers ball. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. 
yeah yeah that's a good scenario to look for uh doug like uh uh you know es may chop uh around 4500 until european close like back and forth back and forth Uh, David, let's see, CVD and Hero. I'm not sure what to make of it. Any ideas? Um, yeah, I mean, you're you're looking at your, you know, your your volume and then uh, uh, your your Hero. Uh, let, we can go through that scenario here. Let me let me just go. We, I'll kind of circle back, David, if you don't mind. Let me get through some of these other questions in here uh, and kind of cover this point here because this is this is kind of the the crux of 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 today here. Starting to understand where this volume is trading on each side here. Uh, and then when we can, where we can anticipate maybe some of these moves to start to unfold, and where they might start to target, like our 95 level down here, or below some of these swings down here. So a be beautiful little stop run uh, down into that area, and then you can see we're right back to square one here, right? And we don't have new sellers in here, not really. It's just these guys that we're buying in here are just, you know, ba basically got their head handed to them. And let's see if these sellers now. There's some new selling right there. Okay, but you know they they may be on the hook as well. Get back up above it, and we come right back up to O2. All right, so let me let me. Okay, I'm gonna kind of. Uh, We'll see if these these sellers. Yeah, it looks like sellers are going to try to try go for a shot here at 95 again, and then let's see if one another scenario to start to understand is selling down below 95. That's new selling, okay, not a stop run. Okay, and then see if they get on the hook, and then you get those mean reversion traders to come right back to 4500. So here we go. Let's see if we get that scenario here. Okay, or are they really for real here? I mean, they're going to move the market and, and we're not going to get buyers coming back in to try to upend them. Okay, a little bit of a stop run. Okay, we'd be looking for them to be upended if we get buyers back up above 95. Okay, and then we look for those buyers to really come back in. Okay, so we're, now we're, we're coming right back down to our 90 level. Okay, instead. Okay, stop runs all the way down to here and here. Okay, that and that stop run. This guy's 645 icebergs still there and high liquidity right here. Yeah, Doug. Thanks for jumping in on that. On with da helping out David. I mean, you're you're the the resident expert here on uh, on Hero. Okay, okay, David. Uh, yeah, let's. Uh, anyway, we can we can go through and and still kind of you know go through this process identifying uh, these buyers and sellers. And what what type of a uh, volume is it? Uh, that's amazing to me. Like I, I just I still just can't get over it. Like what a what a tool to understand. I mean like I just I'm just amazed. Like uh, uh, we we know if like you know these are stops in here. We have a we have insight to this. Is just just incredible. So this the, this is where the majority of the stops are right in here. Okay, so buyers back up above it. Look for it. They'll come right back to 4,500 here. Yep, here they come. They're going to go for it. You know, we can also take a look at the selling in some of these areas here. I mean, look at our profile in here. Now you know we cover profile in here, but that's really Tom Tom B's um, uh, a field of expertise of going through your uh, your volume profile, your market profile. Okay, we cover it in here, but it's just one of many things we'll cover in here, right? But I'm, what I was going to get at is, what if you see this profile skewed? 
and we don't right now is pretty nicely distributed right what if we see just massive selling down here and it's a skew well you know we're going to get probably sellers try to push it you get it you get your b-shaped profile in here more transactions at the lower area here and uh, they'll push it into some of the try to extend it uh and uh, uh start to tr maybe trend All right, see, the uh, we, we we're looking for those buyers to come in, but uh, this kind of spoiled the party a little bit. I mean, if the if those those mean reversion traders show up here, like, they, they've got it if they want it, and they've got a target here of high liquidity, too. They can trade right into it, and this is where they can cover if they want to. So I, I'd be looking for them to show up here. So this kind of skew in the auction is actually for these buyers to trade it back to the mean. It makes good sense. Let's see if they go for it, looking for them, and maybe a bit of a push here on the on the offer. Yeah, see these guys are fickle in here too. There's like, no, nah, we're we're showing some supply, but not really. We pull. We want to show some supply. It's probably probably this guy down here who wants to get his his uh, iceberg filled. Now they just pulled. They pulled and added higher here. Okay, buyer now buyers can really trade it easily back up to you know uh, 99 and 500 here. Now he now he came back in. Come on, buyers, let's see it. Let, if if you want to trade it back to the back to the mean then here's your opportunity they should go for it there there they, there they go there they go see the, the little bit of a skew on the in the order book see how it got, kind of got, became more blue down here now I'm still looking for them to continue on up to 99 and, and five uh, 500 or 4500. Boy, a lot of a lot of games, a lot of games going on in here. And this is gaming in here, as you guys can see. Even look at this kind of this is a like almost the opposite of a uh, ignition algo in here. Trying to skew that auction to the upside. See see how they're see how this algo is doing that. It comes in here and then like, you know, high liquidity and then pulls, adds higher, pulls, adds higher. Uh, so, you know, they're kind of like it's uh, if you look at your delta chart, um, uh, let's let's go through a column in here. Look at um, quotes delta. Right. You're going to see them pulling here. Right. And then uh, and then adding uh, uh, this this the delta chart is so quick. But they're they're pulling more here, uh, so you're, you're we're looking for them. It's kind of you know pulling and adding at a higher level, pulling adding at a higher level, and uh, so yeah, the supply is kind of being added added higher, right? So it kind of opens the 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 area up for the uh, buyers to kind of fill that area in of uh, getting them to enticing them to, to to go higher here so they did it in here as well as in here and it worked it got the buyers to go up to here at least okay here they are again and we just saw a big iceberg in here no not that big
All right, let's see here. So um, not not bad, not bad to see some of these things and start to understand the volumes within some of these areas here and the, the significance uh, and and where they have to become buyers and sellers in here. Now we're, we've got, uh, you know, about 12 minutes until the European close. So we're going to get some volatility in here. These guys kind of shore up their positions. So we can bash down here at 90, then bash right back up to, to 4,500. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try to go for it here. Let's see. And this guy wants to get filled in here. Um, of course, uh, he's waiting patiently. That's a big ice iceberg too, 645. At least for what we've seen today, put it that way. Uh, let's go through David's uh, scenario here, uh, and we'll uh, turn on Hero. Oh boy, I hope I I hope I have data for you, David. I might I might not. No, I'm sorry, I don't. I don't. We'll, we'll have to cover it another day, uh, David. I'm I'm sorry about that. Let me let me turn it on and and just um, at least I can kind of shut it off by really having a really really high threshold here and then we, we can maybe look at it tomorrow uh, in the meantime doug doug's the go-to guy uh, on that uh you can ask doug in the in the in the uh in the forum or in the uh, uh discord chat here all right let's see if we get our buyers now all right so we got some we got our European close, but we've got uh, some selling down here. It's not really stops. Looking for these buyers, trying to trade it back up into uh, this 4,500 here. Some more selling coming in here. Now, see how these guys can, these sellers in here, they're selling up here. They're going to get upended just above it here, right? And let's see the buyers come in, and they should be able to move it here. Yeah, these guys are going to be on the hook. Okay, where are they going to get stopped? Where are they going to become buyers? Up here, 97 on up to uh, 500. Here And here we go. Okay, we almost got to 97. And a little bit of a stop run. Not much. Anyway, let's see here. Let's just kind of review, take a look at some of the, uh, uh, like this is really kind of choppy in here, and we, we, we anticipate that um, uh, due to the close here. Uh, but uh, we were and also looking for some of these other moves. Um, first off, we were looking for more selling down here. Okay, And the opposite scenario was the uh, buyers start, start to come back in because the selling took place down here. Right. This is what we covered last week about understanding where the sellers are uh, and then, you know, looking for it and also a stop run here. And then and then the buyers trade it back to the mean okay? and, and have the um, uh, uh, maybe the other side develop on or the other scenario develop on the other side. So, um, yeah. Anyway, we covered a lot of different things, and uh, uh, anyway, we did get we did see the buyers take it to to uh, to ten and above up to, to this kind of 1250, and then we're starting to look at okay here big stop run, okay, and then maybe potentially sellers on the other hand, other side here with the we got new buying up in these areas in here, and that's when we kind of go, went through the uh, uh, in more detail about understanding where the, where these buyers and sellers are in context. In, in the ranges here or outside of the ranges and then looking for the move back uh, and then still I, I thought we'd since this was pretty heavy selling I thought they would be able to get it right back down here immediately 
they didn't. Uh, we got buyers on the hook in here. Then we got the move. Okay, and we're starting to identify them again in here. And then how and where they might be upended. Okay, and we got the move back down. Now we're, we're looking for the same thing again here. Uh, we, we follow this, you know, these stop runs. Uh, and then also uh, where there's new buying and selling in here. And where they're going to be on the hook. Okay. Maybe a good a good uh, kind of strategy for, uh, uh, you know, your uh, single distribution days here. Okay, We're, we just don't see any sort of skew in here. We're starting to get a little bit of a skew down here. See the bump here? All right. So uh, more selling down at the lower area in here. But uh, kind of kind of matches this one at the moment. It's kind of funny. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks, David. Thanks, Doug. All right, guys, let's wrap it up. We'll call it a day. And uh, uh, looks like, uh, um, well, you know, keep keep your eyes open here to see if we can, if we're going to get, let's, let's jump back and look at our bigger picture, I guess. We just covered the, what we saw today, but our bigger picture here uh, is, uh, well, you know, the 15 minute chart here, our hour chart and our daily chart, nothing happened in here on the daily not much on this hourly on this 15 minute this is where we know there are buyers down in this area here so let's uh, let's mark it up so if we're looking for our sellers to come in then we're looking for them to trade it down into here somewhere around in here shoot let me let me try to move that Yeah, somewhere around in here. Okay, and then uh, if we get our uh, we get our buyers in here, trade it back to 4,500 and above. Well, we see the wicks up here around 12. We saw that during this webinar, but they're they're really up here. Okay, around uh, uh, 32 or so. So let's mark that up, and we'll take a look at these tomorrow and see what what unfolded here. And we also have a gap to fill up here, so we can take a look at that. That's something like that. All right. All right, guys. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, oh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Alec. Um, uh, glad, you, glad you found it helpful here. Uh, and um, look, I, we're covering a lot of different things in here in the order flow. Uh, we're looking at specific levels, and we're looking for the order flow around those levels. Uh, then uh, there's lots of different ways to uh, to trade. Uh, you know, uh, the goal for the advanced webinar is just to try to cover um, many order flow phenomena around uh, di very various higher time frame ways of looking at the market. Okay, if you're looking at candlestick patterns, you're looking at uh, you know it could be Fibonacci's, it could be uh, uh, floor trader pivots, it could be just you know trend lines or something. Uh, or maybe it's market profile or volume profile. Okay, so uh, let, let carry on into the next uh, discussion. Uh, thanks, thanks everybody. Um, we'll carry it on, uh, or Tom B will, uh, you know, start streaming here pretty soon uh, and carry on the discussion there if you guys want to uh, 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 have more uh, live analysis. All right. Yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. I'll have this uh, recording up uh, in a few hours or so. Yep, take care. Bye-bye.